Okay, so this is it. This is the review for your test, but also the last bit of new note taking uh, you're going to be learning for this year. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at a handful of problems from this sheet, and then you're going to do the rest for homework that we didn't cover in preparation for your unit exam. Not much of your unit exam is uh, multiple choice. It's a lot of short answer. So you're going to have to be able to find the theorem on your green sheet and be able to apply it appropriately. So I'm going to talk through at the top questions three, two, and five. It's good to use highlighters or colored pencils on the exam. So let's take a look at what we have in three. It says find the value of each variable. So we're going to solve for x. So in this question here, x is an arc. So I want to try and define um, the remaining arcs. We know that a to c is 140. a to b is x. We need to know the value of cb. Well, if you take cb has an endpoint b and c, and if you follow along the rays that intercept that arc, we have an angle of 80 degrees. So that angle is 80 in this vertex of the angles on the circle. That means the arc is double, okay, as the angle is supposed to be half the arc. So double 80, and you get 18, 18, 60, add the zero. So now, x plus the 140 plus the 160 equals 360. So 140 and 60, combine those like terms. 40 and 60 is 100, so plus 300. Subtract the 300 from 360, and we get x is 60 degrees. Okay. Number two, the directions here say find the value of each variable as well. So we have an arc here of 20, an arc here of 28. Those arcs are formed by the intersection of these two chords. Now the angle, this angle that goes with the chord is half the sum of the arcs. So if I take half of 20 plus 28, 20 plus 28 is 48, half of 48 is 24. So this angle right here is 24 degrees. Now, on any straight line, so this is a straight line here, there is a total of 180 degrees. So x plus 24 equals 180. Subtract the 24, and 180 minus 20 is 160. 160 minus 4 is 156 degrees. And number 5, um, x is the angle here, and so if you follow along the rays that form that angle, it's a tangent line as it touches the circle once. And this is a tangent line. When the angle is inside, it's half the sum. When an angle is outside, so x is half the difference, I'm going to abbreviate, of the arcs, which means to subtract. So if the one arc is given as 240, I need to find the other arc. And we know that in a full circle, there should be 360 degrees. So 360 subtract 240, and we get 120 degrees as this arc. So x is one half of, it's always the larger minus the smaller, so it's going to be half of 240 minus 120. That difference is 120, so then half of 120 gives us an x value of 60 degrees. All right, number three. Number three says CP is five. 
So I'm just going to darken here in pink what we have. We've got a 90 degree angle and this small side is 5. The radius is 9. So that's any center to the outside. So that could be C to A or C to here, but since C to A is a part of that right triangle, I'm going to use that radius of 9. And AB is X. The directions, I don't have directions here. I'm assuming it's to still find the variable. So if A to B all the way across is X, we know that when this radius hits the chord, it bisects it. Okay, so instead of calling A, B, X, I'm going to say that this side is X. So therefore, that side would be X. Um, and I have to find A, B at the end. Okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to solve in this little right triangle to find, okay, this. And then I'll double it, okay, to get the whole length of A, B. So in the right triangle, and I'll make it larger right here, we have this is 5, this is x, and this is 9. If you look at your pink study card for the Pythagorean triples, this is not a triple, so therefore we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus 5 squared equals 9 squared. 5 squared, 25. 9 squared, 81. Subtract 25 from 81, we get 56. So uh, this should be plus. Subtract 25, we get x squared equals uh, the square root of 56. To see if it's divisible by a perfect square, okay, so that would be 4. Um, that's 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 9. 56 can be broken down. This is a good review for your final. 56 is 4 times 14. Square root of 4 is 2. So it's 2 radical 14. 14 doesn't have any perfect square factor. So if this is 2 radical 14 and this is 2 radical 14, AB is our x x would be these two added together. And 2 radical 14 and 2 radical 14 is 4 radical 14. So there's the value of x. And number 3, we're going to go over on the back numbers 3, 5, and 8. So if we look at 3, 3 has a secant and a secant. Now, I have a little saying, and I'm not sure if Mrs. Stevens said in the video, it is for two secants, whole times outside, or external, equals whole times outside. So the whole segment from here over would be x minus 3 plus 4, or combine negative 3 plus 4, just x plus 1. So the whole on the left would be x plus 1 times the outside piece, outside is 4, equals this whole would be the x minus 6 plus 5. Combining those would be x minus 1. So the whole x minus 1 times the outside, which is 5. Distributing. We've got 4x plus 4 equals 5x minus 5. Solving for x, you would add the 5 over to get 9. Subtract 4x from 5x to get x. And the directions just say to solve for x, so we're done. So that's the theorem for segment relationships and for two secants. For two chords, Okay, remember you take, they intersect here, you take one chord, multiply those, so this times this, so 4x plus 2 times 8 equals the product of the segments of the other chord. So that would be 9 times 4x. 
9 times 4 is 36, so 36x equals 8 times 4x, 32x, 8 times 2 is 16. Subtracting 32x's from 36, we end up with 4x, divide by 4, and x is 4. And last is two secants again. So let's actually, um, let's have you cross out 8 completely, okay? Actually, I'll, I'll go over how to solve it, but let's not actually solve it. So it's whole times outside, the whole 6 and 8x, 14x. So whole 14x times outside 8x equals the whole 9 and 7 is 16 times 7. We'd have to solve for x there. Let's actually move to a tangent secant. So this touches once, the secant touches twice, and the theorem is tangent squared equals whole times outside. It's always whole times outside when you have two secants. So length of the tangent is 6, so 6 squared equals the whole is going to be x plus 5. So x plus 5 is the whole times the outside, which is x. So you end up with 36 equals, distribute, x times x is x squared. And because we have a quadratic, we want it set equal to 0. So move the 36 over by subtracting, and we get 0 equals x squared plus 5x minus 36. To solve by factoring, you set up your two parentheses. So it's going to be x times x. The factors of 36 that combine to 5 are going to be 9 times 4. 9 times 4 is 36, and a positive 9 minus 4 is a positive 5. Take each factor, set it equal to 0. And we add 4, get x is 4. Subtract 9, get x is negative 9. But we can't have a negative x because it represents the length. So we have a value of x equals 4. And to finish, on the next page, I'm just going to take a look at 9 and 15. So I don't want to talk too much. So 9 and 15. And let's start with 15, since I moved it down. Find the measure of the arc or the angle indicated, and we're trying to find K to L to M. So K to L to M. And this is a really bad picture. Let's assume that both of these go with this part and that this 5x, mi uh, 5x minus 1 represents the angle. And because it's an inscribed angle, the angle itself, which is 5x minus 1, is half of the arc, which is 8x plus 14. So 5x minus 1 equals half of 8x is 4x, half of 14 is 7. Subtract the 4x from 5x, you get x, add the 1 to the 7, we get x is 8. So if x is 8, we need to plug it in, 8 times 8 is 64, plus the 14, we get 78. So therefore, if this blue arc is 78 degrees, we need to find the rest of the circle, so we need to subtract it from 360. We're going to borrow, so therefore that changes to a 5. 10 minus 8 is 2. I need to borrow again. 15 minus 7 is 8, so we get 282 as the measure of KLM. Don't forget your unit degrees. Okay, last one, number nine. Number nine is the intersection of two chords. So I do this times this. So 14 times 2x plus 2 equals this times this. So 12 times 2x plus 5. Distributing. We get 14 times 2, 28x plus 28 equals, distributing 24x plus 12 times 5 is 60. 
Subtracting 24x is from 28. 28 minus 24 is 4. And 60 minus 28 is 32. Because we want to subtract the 28 over. Divide by 4, and x is 8. Find uw. uw is this whole chord. Well, we know part of it's 12, and this is going to be 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 5, or 21. So uw equals 12 plus 21, which equals 33.